Hey YouTube, I'm Mr. Terry, a high school history teacher. Welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. All right, today we are bringing a channel first to you. And if you're not aware of this channel, it's one you gotta be aware of starting now. And that channel is Told in Stone. Now the coolest thing I believe about Told in Stone is the topics. Every time I, I see a video topic and a video posted by them, I go, oh, that would be really interesting to know. Or like, oh, I've wondered about that before and now they're gonna get to it. So like, for example, today's video I want to show you all and comment on is how much would it cost to build the Colosseum today? Whenever we talk about building projects in history, it's always fun to be able to think like, okay, what would that have cost today, right? Because we see these amazing, amazing projects, but then look at how you know difficult it was for them to make it in ancient times, what that would have taken. Please, please follow them. The original video link is going to be down below. If you like this, I know you're gonna like more of them. All right, with that, let's get started. How much in modern dollars did the Colosseum cost to build? And how much would it cost to build an exact replica today? I want this, by the way, the Lego Coliseum. Oh, it's so cool. It's like, I forget what they said. It's like 10,000 pieces or something crazy. Um, I'd love to build the Lego Taj Mahal. But anyway, what, what I actually chimed in was it, it would be one thing to just go. You could probably go just Google up how much would the Coliseum have cost today? Like, that's lame. Let's hear a story about the Coliseum and how it was built. I'm hoping that's what he's going to be bringing here. We'll start with the first question. The Romans reckoned costs in Cistertii, big brass coins worth a quarter of a denarius. At the time the Colosseum was built, one Cistertius could buy two loaves of bread, four cups of cheap wine, or a single cup of good wine. A tunic cost about 15 Cistertii. Which one you buy in, more of the bad wine or less of the good wine? Dirty. And rent for a decent apartment was probably between 300 and 500 sesterti each year. By the way, it's cool. You can see uh, these like modern, it's like a modern style apartment building, like multi story. It's so cool. You see these, at, I believe, at, like Pompeii and stuff where they have these actually preserved. Rome was such a modern city. It's amazing. The average annual wage for an unskilled laborer was around 1,000 sesterti. A marble mausoleum along the Via Appia could easily cost 10 to 20,000 sesterti. Yeah, you're going to be rich. You have to be super rich to get that Via Appia. That's the a major road. Spend 300,000 getting a private bath to his house. <laughs> Simply finishing Nero's Nero? golden house cost 50 million sesterti. How did the Colosseum compare? Since no literary source or inscription provides any clues, we have to estimate on the basis of labor and material costs. One thing I'm wondering if he's going to get into is, from my understanding, um, some of the funding came from after the sort of siege of Jerusalem and putting down the great, you know, rebel, uh, Jewish rebellion, where I believe a lot of the uh, the city was looted, you know, in that, as well as you know, scattering out the Jews from their homeland and th and and also bringing them in as laborers, as slaves basically to build the Colosseum. That's something I had heard that was like paid for and built by people that were part of the uh, Jewish rebellion. The first task of the Colosseum's builders was to excavate the foundation trench, as large as the building's footprint and more than eight meters deep, <clears throat> removing something like 170,000 cubic meters of earth and stone was an enormous task involving thousands of workers by the way, the site was built upon, um, so Nero at that site, right in the middle of like the downtown district. So the famous thing was that uh, Rome had this great fire that destroyed a bunch of prime, like the primest real estate right in the little valley around the hills in Rome there. And uh, the rumor was that Nero might've been responsible for that because what happened after he ends up building all this, you know, his, uh, using it for his own personal property. And they, they were showing her like baths and gardens and palaces and that kind of stuff. When he ends up dying, um, they end up like uh, demolishing that stuff and want to put, put it back to public use with the Colosseum being part of that as a public building. Contrary to what you might assume, few of them were slaves. Although the private contractors who built okay. the Colosseum well, yeah. had small permanent staffs of skilled slaves and freedmen, most yeah. of the work was done by unskilled day laborers. Okay. Following an approach pioneered by Janet That kind of debunks. I didn't think, that, like, you know, <laughs> Jewish slaves built the whole thing, but I thought I had heard that some of them had at least been enslaved coming back to Rome, and maybe, you know, some of them might have been involved as, as laborers there. But you have to have still a lot of skilled people to make something like this. 
a professor of Roman archaeology at Oxford, I use a 19th century construction manual to estimate the labor required to clear the Colosseum's foundations with hand tools. If I did the math right, something like 70,000 man days of labor would have been required to excavate and haul away 170,000 cubic meters of rocky soil. But this does not account for the fact that the workmen had to cut into bedrock on the north side of the foundation trench and had to contend with the high water table throughout. Yeah. I'd be interested to know, because like those are those man hours are, you know, they obviously seem big, but how would they compare to um, something else? So it's like trying to get a frame of reference would be kind of useful there. Um, yeah, the, the water table there, though, is a little high, but did you know that they used to, um, f in the early days of the Colosseum, they used to fill it up with water and have little naval battles in it. Eventually, it gets replaced, and they build the Hippogeum here, which is the underground structure of it. But for a time they did that, it was the water was hooked up to the aqueducts, and water could come in and then come out. Um, but, man, think of just the engineering for so that. So let's say, um, unbelievable. conservatively, that 125,000 man days of labor were required. 125,000 man I'll days assume of that labor. the workmen earned an average of four sestertii a day, which seems to have been the going rate for a laborer in first century Rome. By that reckoning, the cost of clearing the Colosseum's foundation trench was in the neighborhood of 500,000 sestertii. Next, the foundations were laid. Like the building above it, the Colosseum's foundation was a huge ellipse about 60 meters wide. It consisted of two parts, a lower foundation of solid concrete seven meters thick and a six meter thick upper foundation, also concrete, honeycombed with service passages. Remember, um, Romans were kind of known for being among the first people to develop concrete, right? Um, the, the ashiness, I believe, of the volcanic kind of history of the, of the soil there made it very useful when mixing from what I've heard. Roman concrete, as I've discussed in some of my other videos, was not poured like modern concrete, but spread in courses. First, retaining walls of brick or mean? stone were constructed as a sort of form. A layer of coarse aggregate, in the Colosseum's case, chunks of basalt and tufa, was laid down between those walls, and pozzolana mortar was trowelled over the rubble bed, almost dry. The mixture was then pounded firm with wooden mallets. Besides its strength and durability, Roman concrete had the great virtue of being cheap. All the materials were available locally, and, unlike masonry, a large concrete structure could be built largely with unskilled labor. Amazing, too, how well a lot of it survived over 2,000 years. By my best estimate, the upper and lower foundations together used roughly 250,000 cubic meters of rubble and concrete. I love the mathematics Again, that following he's, Janet Delane, that he's showing. Again, following Janet Delane, who wrote an article on the relative costs of different kinds of Roman construction, I estimate that each cubic meter of concrete costs the equivalent of 10 days' wages for a laborer. By our equation, that gives a total of about 10 million sestertii for the foundation. Next, work okay. began on the superstructure. Although most large Roman buildings were made of brick-faced concrete, both the perimeter wall and the interior support columns of the Colosseum were built with massive blocks of travertine, quarried in Tivoli, and ferried to Rome by barge. The Colosseum required okay. about 100,000 cubic meters of travertine, Roughly one fiftieth, incidentally, of all the travertine ever quarried by the Romans. Do we know where it's actually quarried? I see an image in the back. Looks like a stone that was quarried. The stone, cut into blocks with an average weight of four tons, was lifted into place by simple treadwheel cranes like the one pictured in this relief and clamped with 300 tons of iron. Hmm. Travertine is a hard and heavy stone, difficult to work and transport. It was correspondingly expensive. Each cubic meter, by Delane's estimate, cost the equivalent of 100 days' wages for a laborer. I've been to the the Coliseum, and I wish I could I could stay longer. And just when every time I I see you know photos of it, high res zoomed in photos, I always see more details that when you're just like a tourist and with the bustle of people, you miss, um, like the columns and seeing that they're like Ionic style columns, uh, with kind of the curly uh, tops to them right there. Very cool. I could just, you could just spend so much time. The basic cost would have been amplified by the fact that each block had to be lifted, sometimes as much as 50 meters, by muscle power. Iron was also much more expensive than it is now. 
So let's say that building the travertine components of the Colosseum cost 50 million sesterii. Although the key structural elements of the Colosseum were travertine, the vaults and substructures under the seats used roughly 100,000 cubic meters of tufa and concrete. Tufa, a soft volcanic stone, was considerably less expensive than travertine, and concrete, Super as we've common. seen, was cheaper still. The relative economy of the materials, however, was partially offset by the complexity of constructing so many vaults, ramps, and passageways. You know, when you, when you look at, you know, because the Romans obviously were very influenced architecturally by, you know, the Greeks, but this is stuff the Greeks weren't doing with um, their biggest buildings, you know, like, like the Colosseum being out of small bricks and concrete. That's not something, you know, the Greeks had done, which would have required, you know, huge marble and, and, and all the different stone that they had to quarry this way. This way could be kind of efficient that way as far as, uh, break it down into smaller pieces, small bricks, and then you know, and ca ca carve those out ever, and then use the cement. Um, much more like a modern-day building process than, say, what the Greeks did there. Also, seeing all the arches and stuff, which is just something you know, else you didn't see with the Greeks so much. Complexity Boy, they love of their arches and so domes. many vaults, ramps, and passageways. So I think that 20 million sesterii is a reasonable guess for the cost of the substructures and passageways. Except for getting the high. uppermost tier, which had wooden benches, the seats of the Colosseum were made of Carrara marble. Although this was one of the least expensive varieties of marble, it still cost far more than travertine, perhaps the equivalent of 150 laborer days per cubic meter. Mm. Very cool, I've never though. seen any estimate for the amount of marble used in the Colosseum. The lowest tier of seats, the senatorial podium, was built entirely of marble. The seats rich above people seats. had brick substructures faced with marble slabs. On that basis, I'll say, more or less arbitrarily, that 5,000 cubic meters of marble were used throughout the building. Sounds good. If that number is anything like correct, the cost of the marble would have been around 3 million sesterii. The corridors of the Colosseum were plastered, painted, and equipped with lead pipes for water fountains. More than 150 life-size statues stood in the arches yeah. of the upper stories. And that, that's something you, you wouldn't know if you went there today, is to know that those archways, yeah, had the different statues in it, which I'm, I'm glad he's going to go into and hopefully get a, um, a, a, an estimate. I don't know how you're going to be able to do an estimate. That's going to be very difficult. Um, but Oh, and then the roof, of course. I'm excited to see what he does with the retractable and roof. And imposing quadriga groups crowned the main entrances. The statues alone, to judge from attested prices, would have collectively cost well over a million sesterii. Without attempting to estimate the expense of each component, I think it's reasonable yeah, to suggest what, what total finishing do? costs in the neighborhood of 2.5 million sesterii. So, Anyone know, uh, and someone help me with this if you're a, a, Rome, a Rome person, um, <laughs> a Roman, what were the statues, I've wondered this and I haven't looked into it, what were the statues of? Were they like Roman gods, famous leaders in history, famous gladiators, just general statues of, you know, non-specific people? Um, if you would, if you know that, let me know down below. How much did it cost to build the Colosseum 19 centuries ago? Adding up the estimates I've given to this point brings us to 86 million sesterti. This, I suspect, is still too low, since basic estimates on the basis of material fail to account for the many challenges of constructing a building on the Colosseum scale. So let's say, okay. just to have a nice round what about figure the roof? we can work with, that construction costs something on the order of 100 million sesterii. This was a lot of money. Was he not going to do the roof? So the, the no, the, um, the Colosseum had a retractable roof. If you go back to... Let me find, okay, like the picture here, sorry if my mouse is hard to see, pull it around here, towards the top. Uh, these notches at the top here um, have a hole in them, and in them you would have put a big wood beam that would go over the top, up high here, and that would be tied to kind of like a, a fabric um, that had like a pulley system. Um, I think it was used by like the sailors, like sailors were kind of trained how to use it. And it could almost fully enclose the uh, um, the Coliseum because, of course, back then they did this kind of they, they did the games. They were in the daytime. And that could be really hot. Italy's really hot, so they had a retractable roof, which was that part. And I wonder, 
I mean, it wouldn't be as expensive as some of these other things, but still so cool. Say, just to have a nice dirty. This was a lot of money. The average annual income for a Roman laborer was around a thousand sesterti. Imperial Roman senators, who were required to own property worth at least mm. one million sesterti, were very wealthy men. The two richest Romans known to us were worth 400 million sesterti, four <laughs> times Narcissus. the estimated cost of the Colosseum. Great name. But if my estimate is anything like correct, the okay. Colosseum was far from the most expensive building project in Rome. Okay, what was? Domitian reportedly spent. Uh, I'd, I, things that would come to mind, um, the dome, especially because it's domed um, at the uh, Pantheon, that would be part of it. Uh, I mean, there's larger areas like the Forum and all those buildings and the baths and stuff. I'd actually be interested to know what was uh, more expensive that way. Domitian was assassinated at 44 by court officials, presumably jealous off his weird long neck. <laughs> Nearly 300 million sesterti just gilding the roof and doors of the vast Temple of Jupiter on the Capitoline Hill. Hmm. And the Aqua really? Claudia and oh, Aqua Anio yeah. Novus, the two greatest aqueducts of the Imperial City, cost 350 million sesterti to complete. Even I mean, those, yeah, I, I can't believe I forgot. <laughs> Claudius's um, great aqueduct there. That thing is insane. Goes forever um, and was the major water source. I totally forgot. Totally These were dwarfed out. by the form of Trajan, Trajan whose column. cause may have approached a billion sesterti. That's a bunch of it things because, I mean, the column itself wouldn't cost as much as the, the Colosseum, but, I mean, there are buildings, so they're counting all the buildings that were also kind of as part of the forum. I don't know if that's like a single project. Of Trajan, I whose cost may have approached a billion sesterti. It is impossible to convert Roman sesterti to modern currency with any accuracy. But if we assume, on the basis of comparative prices, that an early imperial sestertius had the purchasing power of $20, Go the Colosseum cost the equivalent of $2 billion. About as much, in other words, as a very expensive modern stadium. That's more like, okay, so over $2 billion. The Cowboys football stadium, Cowboys stadium was just over 1 billion, right? And didn't that like break the record? Is there, is there a, um, a, a arena bigger than, or a more expensive than the Cowboys, which again, just hit a billion, 2 billion. Now it's time to tackle our second question. How Two much billion, would it cost okay. to build an exact replica of the Coliseum? So glad I watched this because I am just starting Rome in my class and teaching. Uh, in the class I teach, and I'm glad I could bring that up because in a later this week or next week we're going to talk about that, and I'll make sure to drop that reference. Initially, estimate. I thought about trying to estimate the cost of doing everything. We could build from a Lego version. the stone to laying the concrete, the same way it was done 19 centuries ago. This, however, proved impossible since most ancient tools and techniques no longer exist. Labor would be. Not Speaking only now. of transport, for example, example, you'd need to build hundreds of heavy wooden carts, purchase and maintain a herd of oxen to draw them, and train a battalion of ox drivers. And if the oh, were done if you're okay, is he saying if you're doing it by using ancient methods today, though? Because if you use you know modern machinery and stuff, obviously it would be more efficient that way. Really, by artisans using hand tools, many of whom would have to be specially trained, the cost of labor alone would be astronomical. So I decided instead to estimate the cost of building a replica of the Colosseum made with the original materials, that. but using modern machines and construction methods. Okay, okay good. Good, he's using modern methods. But I, I, I've never seen this diagram here, that like construction diagram. This is really, really cool. Man, I could sit and look at this forever. I won't bore you with that, but that's so cool, showing all the different parts and then building it. So cool. The site, I decided, would be in America where? on a plot of but land where? already owned by the builder and in an area with easy access where? to both a large labor pool and the raw materials. New York, L.A.? I did not specify the region Aww. in which the replica would be built or whether construction would be done by unionized workers. Because that would, I mean, that would vary greatly. If you put this in the middle of nowhere, it's going to be way cheaper than urban <laughs> New York City or something. Then I tried to find an expert who could help me. Okay. I emailed Ooh, several yeah. classicists, a half dozen professors of civil engineering, the International Union of Bricklayers and wow. Allied Craft Workers, That's cool. and a limestone quarry in Indiana, among many others. Nobody responded. Finally, <laughs> I put up a community post here on YouTube, 
asking anyone with experience said, estimating the cost of large masonry structures what a good to send me a message. To my profound relief, several subscribers heroically volunteered to undertake the task. Oh, you better believe. Internet community, you, you ask for anything. You, if you have a question, if you need something, put it out on the internet. The first man. of the three detailed estimates I received was submitted by a subscriber with the username Magnificus, an architectural project manager. <laughs> And Rome, with the use of computer Rome design fan. and estimating software, he proceeded level by level, expensing okay. by material and finishes. Thus, he assessed the cost of the senatorial podium, with its lavish use of marble, at nearly $27 million, but assigned the uppermost tier of seating, with its wooden cool. benches, a cost of only $3.5 million. He believed that the 160 marble statues perched in the upper arcades could be made for a cool four million with CNC <laughs> stone carving machines. Okay. The entire Colosseum, he estimated, could be replicated for as little as $150 million. Okay. This, he acknowledged, seemed low, but he pointed out that the Colosseum had no modern amenities. I mean, I see like, like um, smaller like American soccer stadiums. They actually wouldn't have seated as many people, but they have more square area and stuff be uh, around that, if not actually potentially cheaper. I mean, that, that seems fair. Was made from materials that could be easily sourced and was decorated in a relatively straightforward and repetitive manner. The next estimate was submitted by Tim Wilkinson, an engineer. In his got experience, multiple. reinforced concrete for a high-rise structure costs about $1,500 per yard. Applying wow, this really? measure to the Coliseum, when you have a figure of 450 million for the foundations alone, though Tim thinks the actual expense would be much lower, thanks to economies of scale. Still, when factoring in the huge quantities of material needed for the seating bowl and circuit wall, he believes that the total cost of a replica built with the best modern materials would exceed a billion dollars. The last and what? most detailed estimate was submitted by Jim Williams. Okay, that's a huge difference between two. You're talking 10 times bigger. I thought it'd be more around the um, the first estimate, but okay, whatever. That I mean that's that's only that's half of what they paid back then. I would just think the infrastructure for this is would be so much easier now. A retired architect with a background in engineering, Jim estimated total material costs of about four hundred million, including two hundred fifty million dollars worth of travertine and $100 million of marble. That's so cool these people helped. The equipment required 20 bulldozers, 10 concrete pumps, and a total of 30 cranes would cost about $25 million. About 1,100 workers would be needed, including 75 skilled stone carvers and 40 fresco artists. Assuming a two-year construction time, labor costs would be just under $450 million. Once construction management Whoa. costs, permit fees, and all other expenses were accounted for, here. the total price tag would be just under a billion dollars. Oh, under? Okay. Since I lack the expertise to assess these estimates in any meaningful way, I'm most intrigued by the differences between them, which reflect the fact that there is no single answer to the question of how much it would cost to build a replica of the Colosseum. The only way to answer that question would be to actually build a replica. And even Let's then, do it. you'd have only one possible answer, contingent on a unique set of local circumstances. Go fund me. Go fund me. Let's go. In the first part of this video, I estimated that the original Colosseum cost something like 100 million sesterti, which I equated, more or less arbitrarily, with $2 billion. If, as it seems, sure. the cost of producing a modern replica would be half that figure, or even less, the difference is a testimony to modern construction technology yeah, exactly. whose efficiencies counterbalance the vastly higher costs of modern labor. Right. I won't pretend that the figures... I mean, that modern labor is, is more expensive per laborer, but you need less of it because of, you know, machinery technology. ...run around in this video have any real validity. These are estimates piled on assumptions, the turrets and battlements of a castle in the air. But the exercise is intriguing in itself and Very. hopefully illuminates something about the ways and means of building an ancient wonder. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting Holden Stone on Patreon. Do it. Help you might out. also enjoy my book. That's right. Statues, book. fat gladiators, and war elephants.
A special thanks to Magnificus, Tim Wilkinson, and Jim Williams. And thank thanks to all of you for watching. All right, I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, that was fantastic. I love how, how um, kind of like we do a lot of immature, you know, uh, uh, and, and kind of lighthearted, whatever, fun, you know, stuff on here. But this is like very academic. I really like that. Very serious, very academic, very professional um, in, in how they approach that. But at the same time, the topics are so cool. So rather than just being some boring, droning kind of thing where they approach it in such a kind of serious matter it 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 uh it makes it so interesting because the topic is so interesting how much would it cost to build a coliseum today is fascinating i love the amount of work the amount of work just was incredible with this at uh, doing his own work um gareth here and and then also like making sure like he's getting peer reviewed too like that there's a process it's like science right you get peer reviewed so he made sure to get multiple um uh, uh, you know, sources of, of, of reviewed for how much this stuff would cost and, and that kind of thing. So, you know, that's just, that's the way we should be doing things. Right. So fantastic job here. If you'd like to see me uh, watch and you want me to comment, react to any more told in stone, that's great. Let me know. You can come over to the discord server and drop it in the video suggestion channel. So I can see it, drop it down below. If you want to, if you have a specific um, title in mind, um, I'll definitely consider it. All right, the original video link again is down below. Make sure you like it, view it, absolutely sub to Told in Stone. Doing amazing work here. And with that, we'll see you next time. Bye.